So you'll see on the left hand side the questions that are going to be asked and we'll ask that you submit that both mornings that your student is attending school. When they get to school, you see in the center the scanners that we're going to have at the, begin at the front doors of each location. And that green light means that you can go. Um, if you need to still download the School Point app, the flyer that's coming home tomorrow will explain the directions for you to be able to do that. If for some reason your family cannot do that, paper copies will be available for your families. And this really for us is the most important part about us reopening school. If we agree to these standards, if we make sure that our students are coming to school healthy, we believe that this will keep us open in the fall. So this is the flyer that you'll be receiving home. And as you can see, there's directions for the School Point app at the beginning. And then the questionnaire questions in the center. And just a reminder of what the symptoms and the signs are that you need to look for before sending your student to school. In terms of face masks, we've talked um, about this with our staff. Uh, they've been trained on this as well. But I want to show you some of the videos that are going to be shared with our students when they come to school. So I'm going to just show you the first two minutes of this eight minute video. And your students will see this tomorrow if they're coming, if they're in sixth or ninth grade, and then everyone will see this on Thursday as well. Nation. This is Nurse Anne, and today we're going to talk about the different types of masks you might see when you're in school and how to put them on and off appropriately. So first, let's review the masks. You can have cloth masks with ear loops. You can have a cloth mask with ties. You can have a gaiter, which I have on here. You can have a bandana. You can have a surgical mask, which also has ear loops. And you could see N95 masks. What you cannot do in school is not wear a mask. You cannot wear your shirt up over your nose as a mask. And you cannot wear face shields or goggles alone you must wear a mask with those. So now let's review how to properly put on and take off each type of mask. Before you put on any mask, you wanna make sure that you wash your hands either with soap and water or by using hand sanitizer. Again, making sure to clean the fronts, backs, between your fingers and your fingernails and with hand sanitizer for 20 seconds or until it's dry. Let's start with the mask, cloth mask with ear loops. You're going to make sure that you grab your mask using the ear loops, and then you're going to put your mask over on your face, making sure to cover your nose and your mouth. If you need to adjust your mask, you wanna use the top or the... Okay, so that's just one of the videos we're gonna be using to help train. Um, Anne does continue to go through the wearing of each one of those masks and how they should be properly worn. So one of the things that um, we've been waiting for from um, the New York State Department of Health is the clinical guidance and that currently is still not here. So these symptoms still stand as what you should be looking for in terms of sending your students to school. And if they have any one of these symptoms, they still need the following three things to return to school, a written clearance from a doctor, a negative COVID test, and a resolution of symptoms. As I said, we're still waiting on the clinical guidance. And if there's any changes uh, once that guidance is released, 
we will make sure that all families are updated on those changes. So for testing in our schools, if someone does leave with one of those symptoms, you should contact your primary care physician. If you do not have one, you should contact the Department of Health and they will let you know a facility that you can go to to be tested. If we ever have a positive case, then the district will work with the Department of Health to provide names of any students or staff that were in contact with that person during the day. We are going to follow our HIPAA laws, so we won't be part of the tracing, but we will provide names to them so that the Department of Health can do the tracing. And in terms of when we need to close, again, we'll be partnering with the Department of Health, and for us, it's the Steuben County Department of Health, and they will help us determine how long a closure should be for, and if it's classroom-based, if it's school-based, or if it's district-based. So Linda, why don't we, before we go into nutrition, are there any health-related questions we could talk through? There are no questions yet. Great, thank you. All right, in terms of nutrition, so we have an update here. I'm gonna take you to the website and you'll get this information so that you have it as well. So right now our students can sign up if they're 100% virtual for a five day meal pack, which will include breakfast and lunch. And it will be delivered on Wednesdays from our um, transportation department. You can go here on this form to sign up for these virtual meal plans. If you are in the AB model, you can also sign up still for meals when you're home on the three days that you're home and that food will be delivered on Wednesdays as well. So the update that we have for you today is currently the USDA put out a press release stating that meals were going to be free through December 31st, 2020, or until the money appropriated by Congress runs out. So right now, whether you are free and reduced or your paid status, your meals will be free through December 31st. And again, unless that guidance changes um, or the money appropriated by Congress runs out, um, we will be sure to get some information out to you immediately uh, when we have updated information. But right now, whether you're signing up for the three-day pack or the five-day pack, um, your meals will be free. I'm gonna take you back to the presentation. Also on that web page, the menus are available. So each day you'll be able to click on that, or go to the Corning Paint and Post cafeteria website, and the menus are there for students and for families to see what will be coming and what will be available on each day. Transportation. So we have an update for you on transportation as well. So students will be assigned seats on their bus. The update though is that pick up and drop off times are going to vary at the beginning of the school year. So during a normal school year, the routes are pretty standard and um, bus drivers have been able to time them out. So they could say, um, we should be at your home at 650 and we'll be at the next home at 653. Right now for the beginning of the year, that's going to vary as our bus drivers work through these new abbreviated routes and figure out what the times will be. So we'll need your patience with pick up and drop off times as we try to manage those. Mask wearing and social distancing guidance will be followed on the bus and that is different than school. For transportation, a mask must be worn continuously from when you get on the bus until you depart the bus. And if you have any questions or concerns and you wanna to speak directly to the transportation department, you can contact transinfo at cppmail.com. 
So we're going to move into student schedules so that you can see the differences between levels and what Wednesday looks like for each level. So you know that these are our two models. We have the in-person A, B model, and then we have the off-site learning, the 100% virtual model. So if you're coming in the A group, you're always going to come on Monday and Tuesday. And if you're in the B group, you're always going to come in person on Thursday and Friday. But on those other days that you're not in person, you are still going to attend your classes all day. So grades K through five, the first week of school starting tomorrow, if you're in cohort C or in cohort B, you can stop by the school between the times of nine and two. You may have gotten specific times listed from your elementary principals. And if you did, that's when you need to come tomorrow. Then cohort A is going to come September, 9, or September 10th for their first day in person. And cohort B and C will still attend remotely. And then on Friday the 11th, our cohort B will come in person with A and C still coming remotely. So I want to make sure that you understand the time frames that your students will be coming um, in grades K through five. Really what we want to make sure you understand is that for your student, the start time for their blocks is going to be the same. So if you're a math teacher um, or you're in your math block, regardless of what grade you're in, you are going to get a consistent time from your teacher for when you should log in. The end times though may be different each week. One lesson may last 40 minutes and the next lesson may last 33 minutes. So we wanted to make sure that you had consistent start times, but those end times may vary depending on the day and the lesson that they're. So what does Wednesday look, for, look like for elementary? Attendance is gonna be taken each day between 8.30 and 8.40. And then depending on what grade level you're in, different types of activities will happen. For example, if you look at grades K and one, math will happen from 840 to 920. And you'll see the variations across those times. One of the things that's different on Wednesday schedule than the first time we shared these schedules out with you is between noon and 1245, everyone's taking a break. Whether you're at home, whether you're in kindergarten or ninth grade, there's going to be a break on Wednesdays. Sorry, um, kindergarten or fifth grade. You're gonna have a break on Wednesdays. And then the afternoon time is going to be for related service providers to work with your students, um, whether it's AIS, ENL, resource room, consultant teacher services, just that individualized time to meet with students. In grades K through 12, tomorrow is going to look a little bit different. Remember, it's only sixth graders and ninth graders tomorrow. And they will arrive between 7.30 and 7.45 in the morning. And they will be going home tomorrow at one o'clock. If you're in cohort C, you're gonna pick up your materials tomorrow between two and 6 p.m. at the middle school and at the high school. And again, Thursday, September 10th will be for the A cohort, although B and C are still going to log in remotely. And on the 11th, it will be our B cohort and our A and C cohort groups will log in remotely. So our bell schedule at the middle school, this is what a typical day is going to look like. So our sixth graders are going to be released at 750, our seventh graders at 753, and our eighth graders at 756. And that's when they'll be released to go to their homerooms. This is after their temp checks. And you'll see in yellow the periods four, five, and six. That is when lunch is served at the middle school. So you'll see the time frames are going to change a little bit for Wednesdays. And you'll notice that there's two schedules here. On a typical Wednesday on the left hand side, will run a normal bell schedule with abbreviated times starting at 9.39.
And after fifth period, you'll notice an intentional break there from 1219 to 104. Your students will not be in any class. It's almost like a built in break in the day. And when they come back at 108, that's when period six will start. And then we'll go through three o'clock for the remaining periods. On an advisory day, the time frame is going to look different. That homeroom time is one hour. That's when we'll allow students time to um, work on some social emotional learning. It's when students may have time to work on their presentations of learning. It is a normal day for them in terms of advisory. Last year they had advisory once or once a month or um, once every four to six weeks with that one hour time frame for advisory based time. So we still want to offer our students the opportunity to have that. So you'll see shortened periods on those days. Still with that built in break after fourth period from 1215 to one. Switching to the high school, the bell schedule is exactly the same as it was last year. Arrival time and temperature screenings will be from 715 to 745 and period one will start at 755. Wednesday, however, does look different. It's going to start at 945 for period one with that intentional break after period five from 1215 to one. And the day will still end at three o'clock. And I think Linda, oh, one more. And um, we've had a lot of questions about our career and technical education program. So those CTE classes, we have worked with BOCES to allow our students and with transportation to allow our students to attend four days a week. So students who are in the career and technical education program, they will be able to go to their program on Monday and Tuesday and on Thursday and for Friday. And we looked at some of the programs that they have there, such as welding, um, heavy equipment, cosmetology, and we'd like students to have the most opportunity that we can offer safely for them to get that hands-on experience. So before we go into special education, Linda, how are we doing with questions? Can you elaborate a little bit more on what Wednesday would look like for BOCES students? So um, BOCES students on Wednesday will follow their normal schedule through the morning or the afternoon. So depending on what grade they're in, they would still attend their virtual classes. And then their BOCES schedule, they can still log in to their BOCES classes on Wednesday as well. And we have one other question. You, you just did a piece on transportation. It was unclear with the staggered arrivals and departures each day, how are we gonna ensure that students arriving all together will be safe? So we, we do have plans in place at each building for six foot distancing as they arrive into the building for their temperature check. And those processes will be followed when kids get off the bus. And we have just one more. If my child misses a day at school because I could not arrange for a pickup and drop off on that day, will they need a negative COVID test to come back? And could they attend virtually if they have to be home? So there's two parts to that question. Yes, they can attend virtually on those days. They will need a note though, just as if they were missing school, um, if they were coming in person. So they'll still need a note provided and as long as they don't have one of those symptoms that are on the list then they do not need the negative COVID test they only need those three pieces of documentation the written note the negative COVID test and um, resolution of symptoms if they have one of the symptoms listed so if it's a transportation issue they would not need a COVID test thank you and that is, oh, we do have one more, BOCES. Um, 
the timing overlaps on Wednesdays for BOCES and period one. Which do I report to? So if you're scheduled for a class at the high school that you would need credit for to graduate, we would like you to attend that class and then you would go to your BOCES class when you're finished with that class. And one more transportation, our bus is running tomorrow for sixth and ninth graders. Yes, they are. That's it. All right. So Jen, are you able to unmute to talk about the special education slides? I think so. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Go ahead. Yes. Good evening. Um, Jennifer Batsing, the Director of Pupil Personnel Services. Um, thank you for allowing me an opportunity to kind of highlight where we're at with our special education services. Um, first of all, district-wide, we have been working um, and we're really excited to have our students back in school as much as possible. Um, please know that we have an obligation to provide services to students who qualify um, for special education and we have an obligation to provide those services both in the hybrid learning environment as well as the remote learning environment. Um, and currently we provide service to almost 900 students. Um, there are very unique and individual student needs which may require us to modify the delivery of those services um, to accommodate this temporary, hopefully, remote learning environment. Um, this will require our families to actually receive phone calls from our special education teachers, our related service providers, and we expect that this is going to take us some time over the next several weeks to be in touch with you and really finalize schedules um, and ensure that kids are getting their services. We want to try to um, be as, less dis as least disruptive as possible in pulling students from classrooms um, and disrupting their time in their classrooms with their teachers. So there will be some very specific conversations occurring over the next several weeks. Um, relative to CSE meetings, we still are required to hold those annual review CSE meetings and reevaluation meetings. Those will continue in the virtual manner until January um, of 2021. Um, if you have any questions about who the committee CSE chairperson is, you can certainly call your school and ask, or you can email PPS. We do have a, an email, it's PPS at cppmail.com. And that email address can be found on the district website. Um, and if you email us, it actually goes to myself and the two supervisors of special education, Jeff Marshanda and Becky Henderson. Relative to related services, such as occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy, and counseling, those services will be provided um, in both the hybrid learning environment and the remote learning environment. Um, for those services that will be delivered through teletherapy, we will use the Google Meet platform, which is the same platform that um, students will be accessing their education from on those uh, remote days. When students are in school, we will work to provide as much service um, either through a push-in model or a pull-out. Again, very individualized and parents can expect to have um, phone calls from special education teachers and providers relative to those specific schedules. All right, we're going to move into attendance and chronic absenteeism. So this is just um, a reminder for families that we need students to be in school this year. Again, the guidance from New York State Education Department um, is a little less flexible um, than they were in the spring. So attendance each day is required. For K through five, there'll be attendance taken one time per day. And through six through 12, it will be taken by class period. And we will make sure that your student ally, that your student has a student ally if you do not have internet connectivity that is adequate for learning. 
Um, again, there will be flyers coming home depending on which level you're in, K through five. Um, there's a flyer that will talk about student allies and how they're going to be connecting with you. And the same thing will happen in grades six through 12. Um, if you need a student ally, one will be assigned to you. And, and there's a flyer that explains a little bit about how, um, how those contacts will be made and who could be one of your students' student allies. Which leads us into our technology and connectivity. One of the greatest um, partnerships I've seen in the last uh, six months is a group that is working to try to help us get internet connection for all of our families. Um, and with their help uh, from the Community Foundation and the Corning Foundation working really hard on this to make sure that we have um, some of that access. So right now, um, we want to make sure that you understand um, where to ask your questions to. If you have internet questions or if you need tech support, you can dial tech support at cppmail.com. Um, yesterday, our director of transportation actually drove all over our 236 square mile district um, with three computers in his car trying to figure out where exactly hotspots work. Um, so he's been able to map out some places where they work and our families who need this will hear from um, him directly or from someone from that department directly when we're ready to share those. And at that time, there will be an agreement for families to sign um, that says that we are, you know, providing a hotspot and it allows us both to know where those hotspots are. So we're going to continue to work at ways to keep our students um, connected to school who are in these environments. And this slide really is just a summary of the things I just talked about. Um, one of the other things we'll be sharing is where there is public Wi-Fi um, and where it's safe for our families to connect if they need to. And in terms of athletics and extracurriculars, right now, you, the governor had put out information that sports could start on September 21st, but our league and our section leadership are really working to go through the guidance that's been provided to determine what really can happen on September 21st and what it could really look like in terms of our students who are cohorted. And we're going to try and keep extracurriculars in that same pattern as sports, uh, as interscholastic, uh, interscholastic sports. So we're working to finalize that. And there's a committee established to work on this. There's coaches part on the committee and advisors on the committee for different extracurriculars. So there will be more to come on this. Um, we just really need a better understanding of what September 21st really means and what it could look like for our students in Corning. We will be having a parent camp for Google Classroom and we've decided to share this by level. So if you have a student in K to five, the training will be very specified um, for your child at that level. And then there's also a specified training for six through eight and one through nine through 12. Um, you know, what we're asking kids to do in Google and how they'll be using Google will be different at each level. We wanna make sure parents have a good understanding of where their student is. So we will advertise this on the district webpage and we'll make sure that the principals share these dates out. And we do have one coming up very soon, Thursday evening for middle school and high school. And then the K to five um, training will be on Monday. Um, one additional phone number we wanna make sure that all of you have is for child care aware. For those of you who are still working on what those three days out um, could mean for your family or if you're needing child care for all five days, you can use this number. We also have posted to or shared to additional um, child care sites out um, through our Corning Painted Post avenues of communicating. 
And we'll have one additional one ready to go for you tomorrow. And finally, um, I think it's important just to know that, you know, we don't know exactly what every piece of school is going to look like this fall, but your student safety is our number one concern. We want them to feel a sense of belonging and loved and be back in their buildings and provide them with an education that we can all be proud of. So Linda, why don't we go through any additional questions that have come up? We do, we have just a few. Um, one is timely, it's asking, will freshmen be given their Chromebooks tomorrow during the day or do we need to pick up tonight between two and six? They will be given tomorrow during the day. And then we have some health and safety. On the symptoms, how are we distinguishing allergy and asthma symptoms from COVID symptoms? That is um, such a great question, and I wish that I had a better answer for you than the one that I have. Um, right now, the guidance from New York State Department of Health says that there is no difference. Right now, if you have allergies or have COVID, um, you still have to have those three pieces of documentation to return to school. Uh, we're hoping that the clinical guidance will allow our primary care physicians and healthcare providers to make some of those determinations, but right now um, we have to treat all symptoms the same. And what would that timeline look like? What is the amount of time allotted for parents to pick up a child if they were to get sick on the bus or at school? So once your student has been identified with a symptom, they will be um, you know, taken to the nurse's office and the nurse will um, provide an additional um, set of tests uh, you know, to go through. But then they will be isolated in, in kind of like a, a holding room, an isolation space. So they're removed from their peers and uh, parents will, parents or family members will be contacted to come in and pick up their student. And at that time, we would need them to come in as soon as possible to get them. Can we go back for a minute and talk about the process of deciding when a school is shut down versus a classroom? Yeah, so actually that will be determined through the Department of Health. So they will, um, go through their the testing procedure. If someone comes back with a positive case, then they'll begin their tracing procedures. Um, they'll contact those that have been in contact with this person um, and they will determine based on number um, and proximity, whether it is a classroom space. So for example, if you're at an elementary school, your students will um, only be with a certain amount of kids between eight and 12 kids a day. Um, and if that can be contained, then it would be. But when you move to the high school, your student may be in contact with more than just eight. I mean, they will be in contact with more than eight um, to 12 kids. So the recommendation for the high school may be different than an elementary classroom. We have a question here about peanut allergies. How will peanut allergies be handled with students eating in their classrooms? So I actually posed this question this evening to um, our food service director, and he really is going to look into that guidance a little more. Basically, kids aren't going to be um, at the same tables at the same space where in in the past we've had um, spaces in each cafeteria designated as peanut free spaces. Um, as we know students that have peanut allergies, we will continue to protect them and make sure that they are safe, regardless of the location that they will be having lunch. And we have no more questions, but a comment saying, finally, this is not a question, but a thanks. Among all the uncertainty, we appreciate what you're doing to plan the year safely and to communicate with us. Thank you so much. We, I, you know, I, I just wanna end um, tonight 
just by saying we are so excited to have our kids back um, and we will do everything in our power to keep them safe, but to provide them with that sense of belonging and, and get us back to school safely where we all need to be and want to be. So thank you so much for being in this with us. We got, a, we got two more questions in while we're doing that, Michelle. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Sorry. Um, one more question. Can students purchase a lunch on Wednesday? Yes. So when you sign up for the meal plan, um, you'll sign up for those three days that if you're in the A cohort, you can have lunch um, delivered to you for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you're in the Thursday, Friday group, you can have lunch provided to you Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We will make sure that all of our families are fed breakfast and lunch if they need it. And so there's that website that I took you to where you sign up. That's really important for families to go in and fill out that form. And we have one more question. Oh, there's, there are a couple coming into us. For kids attending in person, is the process the same for a doctor's appointment? That's what it says. I think that the question might mean, has it changed since last year? Yeah, so they'll sign out as normal. They need to bring in a note in the morning to sign out to go to the doctor or the orthodontist or the dentist or whatever um, the appointment is for. And they would just return with a note um, similar to our normal processes in a normal school year. Although I don't know, you know, if anything's ever normal. And thinking about clubs, can kids join clubs remotely or is our emphasis on starting classes right now? Right now our emphasis is on starting classes, but as soon as um, we get more guidance about athletics, you know, our plan is to get extracurriculars up and running um, as well. So uh, if you're in an A cohort and the, the group is meeting after school um, on a Thursday, you would be able to join remotely on that day. Okay, so with more questions, our Q&A is empty right now, so we're going to keep that down. But you can go to see, ask, CPP, ask at cppmail.com if you have more. We'd be happy to get back to you. That's all we have, Michelle. All right. Thank you, everyone, so much, and we're so happy to see your kids tomorrow. Have a good night.